when we've dealt with the definite integral, so far we've looked at Riemann sums. Now we're going to be looking at the definite integral as the area of a region. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to evaluate a definite integral by drawing a picture and using geometry. Okay, when we're looking at this, this definition I actually already used in my previous video, but I'll go over it again. If f is continuous and non-negative on the closed interval a to b, then the area of the region bounded by the graph of f, the x-axis, and the vertical lines x equal a and x equals b is given by this formula. So notice the antiderivative, that's basically just telling me that we're looking for the area under the curve. My curve is f of x, and we're going to go from x equals a to x equals b, right? So in all of these examples, what we're going to be doing is drawing a picture so you can visualize what you're finding, and then we'll try to use geometry to actually get the answer. So this first one, it's asking me to find the area under the curve f of x equals 3 from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So first of all, let's go ahead and draw the function. The function f of x equals 3 is just the horizontal line y equals 3, so we've got that. Now my vertical lines, I'm going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 4. So x equals 0 to x equals 4. Okay, and what we would like to do is find the area under that curve till it gets to the x-axis. So that's what we're looking for. And you'll notice if I want the area under that curve, I really don't need to do a Riemann sum because that is just a rectangle. I can use the formula of a re for a rectangle to actually get that area. So the formula for a rectangle would be length times width. So the length would be 4, the width would be 3, and my integral is going to equal 12. Okay, next one. Um, I'm going to find the area under the curve, x plus 3, from x equals 0 to x equals 5. So first of all, let's draw a picture of what that looks like. Um, x plus 3 is a linear function. It has a y-intercept of 3. And then from here, since the slope is 1, we will rise 1 and run 1. So that's what my line is going to look like. And then we would like to go from x equals 0, which is going to be right here, to x equals 5. Okay, let me make my line a little bit farther there. Okay. So you'll notice. And then I'm just going to go ahead and shade underneath. It always stops at the x-axis. We would like to find the area of that figure. And if you were to turn your paper sideways, it would be pretty easy to tell that this is a trapezoid. So I'm going to actually use the area of a trapezoid. If you don't like that way, you could always split the figure up into two parts and find the area of a triangle and a rectangle. But we're going to try to stick with trapezoids, especially since our next method, our next lesson, will rely on us knowing the area of a trapezoid. Okay, the area of a trapezoid is one half height times the sum of the bases. Okay, so if I look at this problem here, I have one half. The height, if I have this um, paper turned sideways, which I can't really turn mine sideways right now, you'll notice the height of my trapezoid is going to be five. So it's going to be one half times five. And then base one, this is base one right here. You'll notice base one is three units tall. And then base two, if you're not exactly sure how tall that is, what I could do, that happens when x equals 5. So if I plugged 5 into this function, I would get an answer of 8. So I do know that the y value up here is 8. So base 2 is 8. So I'm going to have um, 1 half times 5 times 3 plus 8. And when I do that, I should get 27.5. And again, you could have broken it up into a triangle and a rectangle. You should still get 27.5. All right, let's try next one. This time it says 5 minus the absolute value of x. Absolute value of x I know looks like a v. And since it's minus, I know the v is going to open upside down. And since it starts with a 5, I know that it's going to touch the y-axis at 5. Okay, and I actually, if I wanted to find the x-intercepts, I could set this equal to 0, and I'm going to get positive 5 and negative 5. So my absolute value function will look something like that. And I would like to find the area under the curve from negative 5 to positive 5. So I would like to find the area, and again, we always stop at the x-axis. So that's what I would like to find the area of. I notice that it's a, a triangle, so we'll just do 1 half base times height. So it's going to be 1 half times the base. This whole length is 10, and then the height is 5. So if I do 1 half times 10 times 5, I will get 25, and that will be the um, integral. Right? Number 6, we've got the 
we want to find the area from x equals negative 2 to x equals 1 of the function 3x. And again, this is going to be a linear function. Um, the y-intercept will be 0. And then since the slope is 3, I know I have to rise 3 and run 1. So it's going to look something like that. Right? And then we would like to find the area from x equals negative 2 to x equals 1. So notice, since I want to find the area under the curve from the curve to the x-axis, we're actually going to find this area right here, and we're going to find this area right here. And I notice that there are two triangles, so I'm actually going to name them A and B. Okay, when I find the area of A, it's going to be 1 half base times height, so it's going to equal 1 half. The base is going to equal 3. And the height is going to equal, if I'm not sure what that, where that hits, again, I can plug negative 3 into this function. And if I plug, oh, it's actually just negative 2. Um, if I plug, that's only 2, actually. Okay, 1 half times 2. If I plug negative 2 into this function, I would get negative 6. So I know that that distance is 6. Okay, so when I do that, 1 half times 2 times 6 is going to give me 6. One thing that I am going to do different about this one, since this area is below the x-axis, my answer will be a negative value. So that's going to be negative 6. And then for b, um, again, it's just going to be 1 half base times height. So it's going to be 1 half. The base of this triangle is 1. The height, again, if I'm not sure, I can just plug 1 in here, and I will get a y value of 3. So 1 half times 1 times 3 will give me 1.5, and then if I add those two together, I will get negative 4.5. And notice that should make sense because there is a bigger area underneath the x-axis than above, so that's why my answer will turn out to be negative. All right, let's try one more. All right, the square root of 16 minus x squared. If you're not familiar with this formula at all, it's actually a half circle, and the radius of it is going to be 4. So just a half circle because it's just the positive square root with a radius of 4. Okay, so we're going to have a picture that's supposed to look like a half circle. It doesn't really look symmetrical, but it's supposed to be. Okay, and we would like to find the area under that curve from 0, x equals 0, to x equals 4. So this is the part we would like to find the area of. And I notice by looking that, at that, that the area is going to be a quarter circle. So it's going to be 1 fourth pi r squared. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 fourth pi. The radius of the circle is going to be 4 squared. So if I work this out, 1 fourth times pi times 16 will give me 4 pi. And it will be positive because all of this area is above the x-axis. So hopefully now you're familiar with finding a definite integral using a picture and geometry.